So this is for just a little bag. You can use vinyl or you can use cork. And the reason I'm doing this one is so you don't have to turn it because a lot of times with our corks and our vinyls, like this is the vinyl I was using, it's so thick that when you sew it together and then you have to turn it, it just doesn't have a very nice corner and it lo always looks like the stitches are going to pull right on out. So this is a bag where you don't have to do any turning and you can use your cork or your vinyl or your leather or whatever you want, any kind of thick fabric. With this cork, this was a very thin cork and so this cork was very thin. So what I did is I used Decavel and I put some Decavel on it and this is the regular Decavel, not the Decavel light and so that gives it that stability that I need. Now when you're making this bag, you can do it any size you want. I happen to do, this is going to be 9 inches wide by, um, I start out with 12 inches tall so it turns out to be, you know, shorter than that. And all you really need to know is that your lining needs to be the same width but it needs to be one inch longer and that way it will take into account the folding over and the folding of the inside. So I am going to now start out so everything's cut out and ready to go and I do have my two pieces for the side. I'm going to sew right sides together along the nine inch sides so these short sides. I'm going to sew those and then with a quarter inch seam allowance and a good quarter inch seam allowance, not a, not a scant quarter, and then we'll come back here. Okay, so here I'm at the sewing machine and I'm going to use a quarter inch foot with an edge guide. Oops, and I'm using my crescendo today. And I'm just going to sew along the top and oh those two edges. So I'm going to just start out right here, get my foot, don't knock the camera, and I'm just going to hold on to my threads and I'm going to start to sew. And I'm just going to sew right along that edge and I'm actually going to speed this machine up a bit. I'm just doing a straight stitch right along there. if you want. And I actually do not use the thread cutter because I want to have thread tails that I can hold on to. And I'm going to do my other side now. Just getting it lined up. Putting it underneath. And I'm going to do a little bit of back tack there. I can tell I'm off to the side when I'm sewing, so I'm not getting it right against that quarter inch. Let's get this lined up right. The, back to my cutting table and I'm going to turn this you can see, I'm trying to get in front of the camera right sides out easier said than done some days come on I usually don't have this much trouble of course you have it when you're doing it in front of the camera. Now you'll notice that the lining, <laughs> that's all wrinkled, the lining is smaller than the outside and I want it that way because anybody knows that when you go and you do your lining if it's too big you're going to get wrinkles in it when you're turning it. So you want it to be nice and even like that and it also makes it so it will hold this down since, especially if you're using vinyl. If I'm using vinyl, I cannot press this. So I'm going to go back to my machine and I'm going to stitch in the ditch right along there and there to hold everything in place. So here I go back to my machine now. Okay, I'm back at the machine and I'm going to put on my 
stitch in the ditch, or this is not the stitch in the ditch foot, this is an edge joining foot, but I'm going to use it as a stitch in the ditch foot, and I'm going to just put that little bar right in the ditch, and I'm going to start to sew. And as long as I can see it, and I keep it right where I want it to be, making sure everything is okay underneath. I'm going to sew right on down. I don't need a back tack this time because it's not really a seam, it's just a top stitching. So you can see I sewed right along there. Now I'm going to sew along the other side. So I'm going to put this down so I'm just on there. And if you keep the bar right up against that fabric, you should sew right in that ditch. ditch along both sides. Okay, I'm going to go back to the cutting table now because we're going to be putting in the zipper. Okay, so now I'm back at the cutting table. Now it's time to put in the zipper. And I'm going to be putting in the zipper. What I did is I marked a line on the zipper. So I put it up against my, my mat and I put a line there because I'm going to be lining it up like this on both sides. And the thing is, you notice that my zipper is a lot longer, and I'm actually going to be taking the, the little pull tab off of there, which is very frightening, I, I know, for a lot of you. So a lot of times what I do is I actually take off that little metal part in the bottom of the zippers, and then it's pretty easy to get it back on. You just stick one side in and stick the other side in, and then I can pull it down and I can make sure that these two parts are lined up just perfectly and then it goes right back on again and it works out really well. Now if you don't do that, if you cut your zipper, and this is my very high-tech fork, and I found that um, a lot of times people will put their zipper tabs in here. The big ones work well, the small ones always tend to fall out. So I put it in sideways. If you can see, I have it stuck in that, in the little holes there to hold it down. And then try and put, what you really need is you just need a third hand. I actually have a third hand that's a replica of the, um, those little birds that they used to make, those little brass birds. And those are really nice. Now this, we'll see how well I do coming in at an angle and then pulling it down at the same time and of course some days it works really well Aha, ta -da. and some days not so well and you just want to make sure that it comes out the same if you always find that one side is higher than the other cut one side a little bit shorter and then feed it in at an angle so that's my high-tech fork version of it um, for this one, I just took the little metal tab off the end. And I want to make sure, you notice my zipper is really long. I, have a, I use long zippers. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tape it on. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just clip this one onto this side. And then this one is going to be on this side. And I have a tendency to clip it on because if I open up my zipper, oops, get it on there. It never fails that I that will be the time that I put the zipper on the wrong way. So this one's going to go on that way. This one's going to go on this way. Okay, so I know which way it's going to go on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my zipper and I'm going to line it up nice and even. I'm going to use my masking tape. And I'm going to stick it down. And I just want the zipper taut. So I'm going to pull it taut. 
and tape it down on the other side so it's nice and tight. Now if you look very closely at zippers, there's a little line that's a little bit darker, a little bit darker stitching line on there, if you can see it. And I'm going to use wash away tape. Now I'm going to use the wash away tape that you can sew through. Now some of these sewing and craft tapes, if you look at them and you flip them over, it will say do not stitch through the tape. So make sure you read the back and that you're using tape that you can actually sew through. And then I'm going to put the tape on here and it, this is my quarter inch tape so it fits right on that zipper, right up against that darker, heavier stitching line, and I'm just pressing it on all the way to the end and getting my scissors and cutting that. And then I'm going to peel it off, that little covering there, get my glasses so I can actually see what I'm doing. My head's probably going to get in the way here. And I'm going to push this so it's right up on that little line right there. And you could push yours up closer or farther away if you wanted to, okay? So I did that side. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side too. I'm going to put a clip there to make sure I don't move it. Okay. And now this side, once again, I'm going to clip my zipper or tape my zipper down. It. And I'm going to pull it nice and taut and stick it on the other side. Find my tape. I'm starting on this side, going to there. So I'm going to put my tape on here, pressing it down nice and hard. And then I'm going to cut, cut it. And then I'm going to take my that part off. And once again, I'm making sure that I'm starting at the same point. I'm going to get rid of these threads. Starting at my line because that's what's going to be lining up on one side. So I'm going to stick it down, making sure that it's staying nice and even all the way across. Give it a good press. masking tape and just clip it on there so I make sure that it doesn't come apart. I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and I'm going to do two lines of sewing. And the first one I'm going to do right along the edge and the second one is going to be on the lower edge to make sure that that zipper, if you look inside, that zipper is going to be held down in two places. Okay. Okay, here I am back at the machine. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my stitch in the ditch foot again. And I'm going to put it, if you can see, I realized I don't have my stiletto with me. I'm going to put the edge right on here and I'm going to move my needle over. So, depending on the machine you have, some move over half a millimeter at a time, some move over um, like a quarter millimeter. So make sure that you get it over a couple millimeters so it will be close to the edge, but you'll catch that whole piece. So I'm going to go and once again making sure that I have that lined up right there and that tape is holding it where I want it to be. Because you know, especially with the vinyl, you can't use the glue to, and use the iron to press it on. You can't use pins. The clips sometimes just don't hold it down as nicely as you'd like it to. So I have pins, <coughs> excuse me, I have clips, I have tape, I have glue, and it's all depending on what I'm doing. I just start opening up the drawers of my sewing cabinet and say, what do I need to use for this situation? I'll cut that put off and you can see I went right along that edge right there. I'm going to flip it over, get my other side down because I do like where it's at. I'm like, okay, that stitching is good. 
So I'm going to do this side the same way. And you notice that it goes right along the side of this zipper. Because this isn't a really big zipper, it'll go right over those zipper teeth just fine without any problems. And I just have a universal needle in here. I like top stitching needles. Sometimes with vinyl, I don't really want to use a leather needle because I'm going through fabric and leather needles are like little chisels and they cut. So you may want to, if you have vinyl, you may want to switch to maybe a Microtex or a denim needle and that would probably work for you if you're having problems with your universal or your top stitching needle. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I want to do that second row of stitching and first I'm going to get rid of all my threads here. Okay. So I want to do that second row of stitching. I'm going to turn it upside down and this is just to get it lined up right because I'm going to flip it back over. I want to make sure that I am on my zipper that I'm going to, I put my bar right along my stitch in the ditch line and you can hear, see here I'm over a little bit more so I'm going to make sure that I put it over enough that I'm going to be sewing on that zipper the entire way. Because sometimes when I'm eyeballing it from this side, I miss it. And then I have to go back and re-sew part of it. So I'm going to be sewing. And now once again, I have this right in the ditch. And hopefully it's sewing through the back of my zipper, if all goes well. if I can line things up right. I'm keeping it in that ditch. And there we go. And hopefully I caught it along the bottom. And so I did that little stitching there. I think it was a little bit shy. So I'm going to move this one over just half a millimeter to make sure that I catch that zipper tape the whole way. And you know it all depends on your zipper too. You know if you have a zipper with a wider zipper versus these smaller ones, it changes everything. that off and now that is that sewed right along that zipper tape. This one I actually missed a little bit so I'm going to go and redo this one. It'll have two rows of stitching on it but I want to make sure that I caught that zipper tape all the way. Now I have threads everywhere. I usually clip my threads a lot neater than this. So I'm going to make sure So I just missed it that one little spot where I knew I didn't I didn't have it down there quite right. And I just don't want that zipper tape coming up in the future. So I'm just going to sew along there real quick. So I think, you know, I know that I learned that when I was doing this, I made a lot of these for Christmas. If I thought I should have it over at 4.5, I really needed it at 5 or 6. And actually, it did need to be over probably two millimeters from that edge. So I just did that one again. So now I have the zipper tape all sewn down. I have everything sewn down both sides, clipping my threads, getting rid of all of that. Now for the fun part of getting my zipper back together again. So I'm going to go, actually, I might be able to do it over here. Let's try it and let's see if I can do it over here. And with this, it, it has a tendency to like to come apart on me. So I am going to just, let's see if I, oh, you know what? I might have to go back to the cutting table. I'm trying to put these in. I'm going to put that up. Come on, get in there. Ugh. 
when you're on camera, things never go the way you want them to go. So, uh, yes, this one, it keeps undoing itself. It likes to, come on. So I'm going to try and get my zipper, the bottom of that zipper lined up just right and then pull it together and pull it up. Come on, there we go. So hopefully I got it. And then I, the, the proof is right here. Did I get it right up there? You know what, that is close enough. Well, maybe not. I'm going to undo that a little bit and I'm going to pull that one side up just a little bit because what we're going to do is I'm going to pull this zipper all the way off and then I'm going to come back and re-thread it on here again so I really want to make sure that those two sides are perfectly aligned and that looks really good now if I look at that I have it lined up I'm going to pull it oops I forgot to cut off the top end of this cut off the top end of my zipper I'm going to pull it all the way off and then I'm going to put it back on again. So here we go. I'm going to put it back on again. Hopefully you can see me. You can see me. I'm doing it. Putting it back on again and I'm going to have to open that zipper up just a bit so it'll start feeding through those teeth. And the reason I'm doing this is I want my zipper closed on both sides for a reason. And now I'm going to fold this down. I'm going to decide how much do I want to fold it down. Okay, so I'm going to fold it and I realized I don't have my seam gauge with me. Okay, so I'm going to decide that I want to fold it, say, that far down. So I'm going to measure and it looks like it's about 5 8 inch from the top of there to the top of there. So I'm going to do this side the same amount. 5 8 inch. So I'm going to fold that down, put a clip right there, and then I'm going to fold it across the top. I'm going to get it to line up. Now the cork folds a lot better than um, my vinyl. Vinyl doesn't like to, whoops, as I knocked my camera. Vinyl doesn't like to really fold very well. So, and then I'm going to come in here, and if you can see, it's kind of hard to see this, maybe I'll zoom out a little, oops, zoom out a little bit, you'll see I'm going to pull this down and this way everything should be nice and flat inside there because this is, the inside is smaller than the outside and then I can pull it down and it should be just fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's zoom in a little bit, I'm actually going to do a zigzag to close these two ends. So I'm going to go to a zigzag and I'm not going to make it too wide. I'm going to make it kind of short in length and I'm just going to zigzag over this and so I am going to just go ahead and flip that thread and you can see I just sewed it into, it's right along that it's inside that seam allowance and I'm going to go do the other side. Make sure you have your your zipper pull on there before you do this. Of course I would never know why that's a problem. Okay, trim this side even. There we go, so now both sides are trimmed. And now I'm going to grab my these pieces. And the first thing I'm going to do is remember to put it back to a straight stitch. I'm going to put on my quarter inch foot. And I'm going to just sew real quick down this side. I'm actually going to trim this a little bit. I can see that's off just a wee bit. Trim it down and I'm going to just, I'm just going to baste it. It, so I don't, I'm not worried, I'm not too worried about this. Oh, and if my, my clips don't hang on to the base of the machine, I'm doing really well. I'm going to pull that, get in here, make sure that this, that this is pulled nice and tight. And I don't have any wrinkles in my lining. This is why I want my lining to be 
don't make it more than an inch longer than your outside piece or it's going to be too long. I did that once and it made quite a mess inside there. So you want to make sure that there, if you can see this, that there aren't any wrinkles in that lining. So I'm going to take this lining piece, make sure it's nice and flat. And if I can keep, if I can stop hitting the camera, that would be a really good thing. And I'm just going to sew this real quick along that edge and just sew everything down. Okay, put this up, pull this out, trim off all my threads, get everything nice and neat looking. Okay, I'm going to take my clips off. Now I have, have my bag just about ready to go. Now, the last, well, almost the last step. And you notice that this is a little bit longer because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this over and then I'm going to sew it down. You notice I'm sewing with the right side up and I'm going to start out, and you could even make yours longer. Some of mine I've made them a little bit longer. I'm going to start here and I am going to back tag just a little. And I forgot my tweezers. I'm going to Here's a pair of tweezers. I'm going to make sure that this is over here. I'm going to pull this slightly to the side as I pull. And this is just the top part. I'm just pulling slightly to the side. And sometimes I'll even cut it. If I have a long enough piece of it, I'll cut it. So I'm going to sew right along there. And this one too. And if you if you can't follow the edge, you can cut this just a little bit. I just don't want that that one edge to show when I flip it over. And you'll see what I mean in a little bit. So I'm going to make sure this is pulled nice and taut. Make sure it's going underneath that foot. And I'm going to back tap. And then take this one off. I'm going to go do the other side now. Trim off all my threads, threads, threads everywhere. And I'm just using regular polyester thread for this. On this one, making sure you have that correct side. And I think I'll trim this a little bit to begin with. So I'm going to pull that over and pull it nice and taut. And you can start, if your machine is, has trouble starting out right at that very edge, because there's some bulk there, I'm going to make sure everybody's lined up nice and neat. You can start on a little bit and take a couple stitches forward and then go backwards. Now I'm going to pull this so that's lined up. Make sure the underneath is lined up, the top is lined up. And make sure you get your, your grabby tweezers out from there. These have little grabbers on them. I forgot about that. And this one, I'm going to trim this one just a snidge too, just like that. Trim it so I can, I can see where my quarter inch is. Okay, I'm going to come up here. I worry my hand's all in the way and you can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to come up here, come up to the edge, back tap a little bit, and then let's come on off of here. Alrighty. So now I have this one done. So now both, both my sides are done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it. So you can see I'm going to pull it like this. Pull it, both sides. Pull it up. Pull it up. Okay, so it's going to look like this. And now I'm going to try and get this on camera. I might zoom up, zoom out a little bit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this is down here. And I'm going to pull it up. So I'm making sure that this is within inside that area there. Let's see if you can 
to see it better. I want it to be down like this. I don't want this poking out when I fold it over. I don't want that. So I'm going to make sure that I push this down a bit, and then pull this over, and I'm going to pull it over nice and tight. Then you can use your clips. And this one too, I'm going to push that down a little bit there, pull this over. And I have a tendency to pull really hard in the center. You, and this is a good place where you may want to use your tape also. Because sometimes I have a tendency to pull this too far and then on the back you can see I kind of bow up. I'm going to do this side also. Just grab some of my clips. And these are, these are interesting clips. I have I think four different types of clips. You know, because why wouldn't I, right? And they all work a little differently, and these guys I just happen to grab because they work well. They're nice and flat, and so they also have measurements on them, so I can sit here and measure if I really wanted to. And they just hold it down well. I'm going to go back to my stitch in the dish foot. Okay, pull my threads out. And once again, I'm going to move this over. And I'm thinking I moved it over. This is a three and a half. The, the center position for this machine is three and a half. So I moved it over to a five and a half. So that's a two millimeters. And I'm going to put it right up against there. Hold on to my threads. And let's see if I can get it started. I'm going to come on just a wee bit. And then I'm going to back tack because this I don't want this to come out. But you know, so I'm going to use my tweezers, and I'm going to keep it pushed, you know, getting over that zipper. And then let's pull this out, making sure that I'm just keeping this nice and hopefully even. Like I said, you know, you can take your time and you could go and um, use tape or something like that. Go get those fuzzies out of the way. Use tape to make sure that it's nice and even. And, you know, the tape is nice because the tape will keep it exactly where you want it to be. You don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to come right up here. I'm going to back tap. And then I'm going to come on off. There's that side. And then I'm going to do the other side. So I'm going to start out, once again, pull this over nice and neat. Make sure you get it underneath there and nothing is tangled up. It, you know, there's nothing worse than you start out and then you realize that you had a little fold or a pleat. Of course, that never happens to me. Hence, the seam rippers are my best friend. And we just sew it down. I like stilettos, I like tweezers. You can sit there, that way I can push it in there, get it all nice and neat, make sure that this is where I want it to be. And I can hold it when it's actually even going under the foot, which is nice. So I that up, lift that up, and clip your threads. And believe it or not, we are done. So then you can just open up your zipper, and now you have your cute little bag, nice and neat. Everything is sewn down, makes a fast little gift for somebody. You could even put, you know, if you wanted to put a little, little loop on there, you could do that, but there you go. So that's the little cork or vinyl bag, really quick, no turn corner, so it looks really nice and neat. And there you have it.